Creative people are usually very passionate about expressing their opinion and one of the topics artists are most vocal about is tracing, whether tracing is real art or if tracing is cheating. I've spoken briefly before in a few videos about tracing and how I feel about it, but I've never made a full video on it. The title of this video probably does seem a little clickbaity, but that is my genuine opinion on the topic. Tracing is actually a good thing, but like all skills, some people mistreat this skill and trace people's work and then post art online without crediting the art or artist that they traced. True, they are eventually confronted about it. In fact, there are entire YouTube channels devoted to doing just that, but even then, some people still refuse to give credit. I myself have been accused of tracing when I in fact used a piece of reference of a character I was not familiar with for a commissioned piece. I credited the artist for their work and stated I used it as a reference but did not trace the piece. I feel that because this was for a commissioned piece, in other words something I wouldn't have drawn off my own back, I needed to get details just right so resorted to looking at another artist's interpretation of a character I was not familiar with. I'm not proud of this fact as I should have asked permission first but this was a few years ago now and I have grown up a lot since then. This is what happens sometimes with commissioned art. Sometimes you do have to find shortcuts to provide the client what they want in the time frame they need it for. I've learned since then not to be so flippant. Before I get into why tracing is actually good, I want to clarify what tracing actually is. A trace is a hint or a suggestion of a thing. Tracing means the ability to follow a trail or a course, hunting or chasing something. When you trace, you are learning to observe and you are translating lines and shapes, values and textures in your head, figuring out how another artist did it. You are creating a memory in your mind and transferring and translating. It is a mirror image of a thing, a copy, a clone. When you are learning a skill, you look at how the experts do it. When riding a bike, you use training wheels to learn how to control the bike without the risk of falling over. It's the same with art. When you are learning a skill, you need a mentor and inspiration to learn. Most artists trace when they first start out to practice practice the control of the pencil or stylus, or paintbrush. This is a very precise skill to learn and involves not only hand-eye coordination, but also muscle memory. You need to find a position you feel most comfortable in. Learning this early enough can help you avoid developing carpal tunnel syndrome. This is where pressure on a nerve in your wrist causes pain and numbness in your hand and fingers. It can be caused with repetitive tension, bad posture, awkward sitting angle, or purely not taking care of your body in general. Many artists draw hunched over a desk and can have bad neck problems, back spasms, and problems with your drawing arm. I've had carpal tunnel so bad, I've had visible lumps build in my wrist joint. Though it's recommended to make sure you avoid repetitive strain, back and shoulder problems, and wear the correct glasses if you need them, tinted glasses to help reduce the glare of a tablet monitor screen for example, you will find a position that feels natural to you. You'll find that not all artists hold their pencil the same way either. I myself hold my pencil with my thumb underneath the pencil, which is why I have an indent on my thumb. Funnily enough, I was berated at school for holding my pencil this way, but when I did it this so-called normal way, I had no control and kept dropping my pencil so just held it the way that felt right for me. I feel that the finished product of a work of art is important. I feel that the quality of the final piece does outweigh the process, but the process itself is still important and when you skip steps, it shows in the final piece. Not to mention many artists will get angry if they see someone has traced their art or indeed stolen their art because they've never experienced the pain of a back spasm or a carpal tunnel when actually creating artwork because making an art piece from beginning to end takes hours and hours if not days or even weeks of work. With a trained eye, an artist can spot a traced piece a mile away. When I do commissions for someone, I send them preliminary sketches, doodles, colour tests, etc. in the lead up to the final piece so that they see how it was made from the ground up. I reference photographs of people, I use drawing mannequins for anatomy and poses, and I also look at 3D models. Any tool or process you use to save time, especially when art is your full-time job like it is for me, is invaluable and yes, tracing does save time. If the artist is a professional, then their drawing skills are already highly developed. They can look at a pose or 3D model and use it as a guide to get the right anatomy of the pose, and sometimes they draw directly over the top of it. Though not all so-called professionals practice this. Butch Hartman would be a perfect example, but I think I could make an entire video on how corrupt his artistic process is. I mean, the guy literally steals fan art and traces over it and sells it off as commissions for over $200 a piece. 
Really? Animated movies made to this day use real life reference, often drawing directly over the top of live action frames to emulate the movements they need to make the animation more believable. This isn't to be confused with rotoscoping, which is a literal copy of the live action movement that is shown in the final finished movie. Animated movies use live action reference and then translate it into their animation, giving it more personality and energy and believability, often exaggerating live action movements instead of simply replicating them. You can tell instantly when an animated movie has gone too far with rotoscoping or simply copying live action footage. A good example would be certain scenes in the animated movie Lord of the Rings or in Fire and Ice. It isn't cheating per se, but it does in my opinion take away the spontaneity of animation. It is argued that rotoscoping does save a lot of time and money when creating an animated movie, but I think it's just adding more steps to the final outcome. For instance, when Disney used to replicate certain scenes from earlier movies to use in their new ones by rotoscoping previous animation sequences. I don't I don't know if it's saving time and money because you would have to go through all that effort to research the scene and then replicate the scene. I don't know, it just seems a bit pointless to me. In my opinion, I think that people who believe tracing is cheating maybe do not fully understand the full process of drawing. When creating a piece of art, you are building it layer by layer, often retracing your own steps and tracing your own work or using a graphite transfer. In my opinion, artists who trace should be called representational artists. Tracing only becomes stealing or bad when you post your art online and give no credit to the artist that you traced the work from. I don't think I would say tracing is stealing since you are recreating a thing, but you are instead stealing the recognition and validation from the artist who created the original piece if you don't credit them or ask permission to use it when creating your own work. Keep in mind that I think there has been some confusion for some people knowing the difference between parodying a piece of well-known art like the numerous parodies of the Mona Lisa for instance and using something as a reference and knowing the difference between tracing something and referencing something. Maybe I should make another video about that. I think it ultimately depends on where you are in your own artistic development. If you're just learning, tracing is a fundamental tool to use. I see tracing like the training wheels on a bike. You rely on it for a while to make sure you can avoid making mistakes. Removing an element that aids you, like stabilizers, is very scary. You can end up relying too much on the training wheels. Are you really riding a bike with training wheels on? Or are you just pretending? You're still going somewhere, but you're not going there on your own strength. You're not learning how to keep balance or observing your surroundings. You focus purely on where you are going. This isn't bad, really. You'll get the same result as the biker without the training wheels on, but you won't have the same story or experience. It comes to a point where you have to remove the stabilizers and take the risk of falling down flat on your arse. For me, tracing is something that should be avoided once you feel your skills are at a certain level. Drawing skill doesn't come from putting pencil to paper or stylus to canvas screen. Drawing skill, in my opinion, comes from observation and drawing from real life. Copying or tracing someone else's art teaches you how someone else does it, but that's just it. You're learning how someone else else has done it. You need to learn how you do it. The best way to do that? Remove the training wheels. Tracing can sometimes become a crutch. You can still use tracing when subjects require the utmost accuracy, but tracing can be an acceptable part of a process of creating a thing. The act of tracing itself is not inherently bad, but don't be a total Richard and post art online and claim you did the whole thing from scratch and not give the original artist credit or even bother to ask permission when you actually traced. That's just asking for trouble. Like with any skill, it's your motivation behind why you're doing it that ultimately decides whether that act is good or bad. Monkey see, monkey do and all that. Learning to draw takes a lot of time, hard work, repetition and of course, making mistakes. I believe that avoiding making mistakes results in you not learning anything. Making mistakes means you are learning. Repeating the same mistake over and over though means you may need to take a few steps back and relearn the basics. It can be a slow and frustrating process, but if you can honestly look at something you made and know that you created it from the ground up, it's a very fulfilling feeling. Tracing itself can be a good skill to know in the industry as it saves a lot of time and money, but it can be bad if this skill is abused and artists are taken advantage of. Use your own judgement depending on what your skill level is, I guess. I'm Mad Munchkin, stay creative. Yeah, the subject of tracing is a very taboo subject and obviously all artists are going to have different opinions on whether it's good or bad. In my opinion, it's actually a good thing, but at the same time, if you are going to say it's cheating or not cheating, etc., at least have some valid reasons to back up that opinion. Just saying it's okay, it's not cheating and then not explaining why, it's, uh... <laughs> You're kind of avoiding the subject, if I'm honest. This topic was brought up because of something that happened fairly recently 
and I decided I needed to be more heavy handed about it and I just want to say thank you to the patrons in my discord server that suggested to actually make this a topic. I want to give my patreon supporters a shout out if you want to support me on patreon there's a link in the description below and you'll be able to join my discord server and get a whole bunch of other exclusive patron rewards so here we go here are the patreon shout outs for April. We have Gareth Alford, Pyrodron, Rainbow Dash Fan, James the Brony, Devon T. Jaring, Risky Dragon, OLD, Seeker, Sanjay DK, DELC17, Transformer Brett, Invisible Gust Picadamus, CT Stormwing, CT0798, Mayan Jinx, Tristan N. Milner, Peter Naters, Kick It Six, Patrick Gardiner, Stainworks, The Wicked Merman, Nukas the Name, Alex Hunter, Brongar, Unknown620, Charles Meeker, Seth Richards, Aces Wild, Mystic Mind, J Rog 1989, Meg the Picked, Rocky Harmony, and Pedro Lopez. Thank you to all of the top Patreon supporters that I have just given shout outs to, and of course to all of the other patrons as well. Your support keeps this channel going and keeps me relatively sane. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so. Here's me signing off. Stay safe, guys. Wear your masks, wash your hands, and, you know, just be excellent to each other. <laughs> I never know how to end these things off. <laughs>